Periscope. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We invite your followers. If you can, this is going to be a quick scope here real quick. The Lord put something very heavy on my heart this morning. And I've been struggling with it all morning. And even part of this afternoon. And so I want to share that with you guys, if I may. Hey, Pastor Bettina, how you doing this afternoon? Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and share with your networks when you come in. If you're on iOS, swipe from the left to the right. If you're on Android, from the bottom to the top. And, uh... Whew, this is tough, y'all. I'm just going to tell you right now. I know a lot of people um, have been watching the news about Alton Sterling. And it's been uh, been very heavy on my heart this morning. The Lord was kind of talking to me about it early this morning. And it kind of it bothered me a little bit, to say the least and stuff. So uh, I'm going to wait for some more people to come on. I know they're probably at work right now. I want to do this later to do it now. So got to be obedient so you know he had people calling me nudging me to do it so i'm like oh okay so <laughs> i just uh not gonna take too much of your time thank you for sharing pastor patina um the lord gave me a word this morning and i want to share that with you real quick um i put it up on facebook first and i, I don't typically do that typically i write my words down that he gave me to he gave me to speak and stuff but uh in that very moment when he gave it to me he said post it on Facebook and I was like okay that's that's out of the norm for me but I went ahead and did it but um I know a lot of people are upset about the shooting that occurred to early Tuesday morning with Alton Sterling and stuff and it's very disturbing uh to say the least um especially for a lot of people who have not seen anything like that before it's it's a very alarming uh, but it's also disheartening in, in a sense and stuff. But the Lord gives us words to, of comfort in these times such as this. So it's um, the word that he gave me this morning. And I just got it on my laptop over here because I, I hadn't had a chance to write it down. to have it in front of me. So I'm just going to read it real quick. And he said, uh, this is what the Lord said this morning. He said, don't lose faith. I see your tears. I hear your cries. Be strong, my children, for I am coming soon. I bring justice with me in my hands. Keep the faith I have given you. Hold on just a little while longer. I will not forget the injustices you face, for I alone will judge the just and the unjust. Vengeance is mine. Be very strong. And um, I can feel the Holy Spirit right now. Even though we're seeing this, this stuff going on right now, I think... Uh, Apostle Brian Key Williams did a scope just a few minutes ago uh, talking about a lot of this stuff, too. And he kind of gave me the same uh, prophetic uh, words and stuff that uh, the Lord gave me this morning. And this is heartening to see that this is the seventh uh, police shooting that we've seen in the past three years. Um, the enemy is trying to do something very, very evil right now. That's probably the best way I could put it. It's, it's very, it's, it's an agenda out there right now that the enemy is trying to bring forth. And he just so happens to be using uh, black men as part of that, as we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of these shootings that are taking place, and we don't know why they're happening. A lot of people want to look at different things, uh, whether it be race in general. Um, but the Lord gives us a word in under that. Good afternoon. Uh, Patrice, how you doing this evening? Thank you for joining. Share with your networks when you come in. But the Lord was telling me something that in Ephesians 6 about, we all know about what, what Ephesians 6 says about the whole armor of God, but the, against the principalities and the evil forces in high places that we battle against. And this is some of the things that we're actually seeing with right now that are manifesting themselves. Because the one thing the Lord showed me this morning that kind of weighed heavy on me was every time this happens, every single time this happens, a hornet's nest gets stirred up. A hornet's nest gets stirred up to the point that people want to start going, running to the streets, protesting, causing riots, causing disruptions and different things like that nature. That's not what the Lord wants us to do right now. The one thing that people fail to do in times like this is fall on their knees and pray. Fall on your knees and pray for protection. Pray for, for this country. Pray for this nation. Pray for these people. That are affected by, pray for this family. I watched the news report today of uh, Alton's son's uh, mother uh, as she was reading at uh, the press conference. 
And I know it hurt a lot of people. It, it, it pulled uh, on the hearts of a lot of people to see his oldest son sit down there and break down and cry. Hmm. I kind of know how he feels in a sense, because uh, I lost my mother when I was his age. To lose a parent unexpectedly is very hard to do. To lose them in a tragic manner as this right now is equally, if not more harder than anything you've ever seen before. So I ask you to pray for that family right now in this time, because right now we don't know what's going to happen. The enemy will try to destroy everything he possibly can. That that there might have been a uh, there's, there's a there's a there's something that's happening there in that community that's gonna pull those people together to pray. They shouldn't protest. I don't say you can stand and you can you can call against it, whatever you want to call against it is what you want to do. But the one thing that I've seen that nobody has done yet is called out that spirit over that region, called out those spirit over those other regions that this has happened at. Because this is not just something that just happens once every few months or once every six months or once every 10 months. No, this thing keeps moving over and over and over because nobody wants to call it out for what it is. And it's truly an evil spirit from the pits of hell. But we need to be able to pray against it and to send it back to where it came from. But none of us are doing that. The, one of the things right now that's, that's kind of, and I'm just going to, Talk country here if I can't just chap in my hide. One thing that's really getting to me right now is the fact that people are looking too much into the past at slavery and trying to blame the things of the past on something that's happening today. Slavery has nothing to do with what's going on today. No, this is a spiritual battle. This is spiritual warfare. You need to get on your post. You need to get on your knees. You need to pray because the only way you can get through this is through prayer and fasting. But ask yourself, have you been fasting? Have you been praying diligently against these things? Or do you just get riled up when something occurs and then a few months later it dies off and then you slide back into your past in your, in your place of comfortability where you feel everything is okay and everything's fine right now? A lot of people flocked to Louisiana this past week for the Essence Festival. They celebrated all they wanted to do down there and stuff like that. But a few hours, a few hours later, a few hours later, something like this happens. And yeah, it's only maybe about an hour away. I went, I've gone to Baton Rouge many times. I'm going to answer your question in a minute. But what we have to do right now is we have to really seek God during this time period. We have to really seek God more than ever right now. There are so many things that are going on at place right now that people don't even see what's going on. They're worried about an election, thinking that a, a, the next president is going to solve this problem or the current president is going to solve this problem. Guess what? They're not going to solve it. They don't intend to solve it. They only intend to stir it up even more. We see what happened in the last six times this has happened. Has any change come about it? No, it has not. It's just keep being re-perpetrated as another Another work of the enemy. Yes, we all have our appointed times. That's the answer to your question. We all have our appointed times by God. We have our appointed times in which we come to this earth. We have we each have a, a, a specific purpose and assignment that's given to us by God. And so, yes, we don't get to choose when we leave this place. God has already assigned that he already we don't get to choose how we leave it. I would like to leave only when God comes back, but hey, that's not up to me. Yeah, but it's not just a black pastor that they need to pray. They need, we need all pastors to pray. We need all people of God to pray. We need all servants to pray in this time period. I'm going to have to block him because that's just not, that's just disrespectful. I don't have time for that right now. I don't have time for that. Whatever, just, you're, you're part of the problem. You're, you're part of the problem. The word of God clearly states and says that you will scoff at him in front of his face. And you just admitted it right there. You're, you're just part of the problem. Lord help. I didn't want to get on here today, but my sister, uh, Mary, thank you for coming in. 
she called me and told me I needed to do this. It was confirmation because I was struggling this morning about it. I didn't want to get on here and talk about this because I know it's not popular. I know people don't want to hear this. I know people want to run to the streets. I know people want to protest. I know people want to fight. People want to turn over cars. But guess what? That's not going to solve nothing. It's not going to solve nothing at all. But the one thing we fail to do is to pray diligently. Pray without ceasing over these matters. You know, it's, it's amazing to me that this past week has been so prophetic. And I've, I've seen these things all this week. And the Lord's been, been showing me how lawlessness is abounding all over this nation. Lawlessness is everywhere. I was just reading an article today that was in the Austin paper about seven four hood soldiers that were shot at in New Braunfels on 4th of July. For standing up to do something they knew to be right. For standing up to believe in something they knew was right. And they get shot out by the people they were intervening to help. It's sad. It's sad. Is gun laws going to change it? No, it's not. Gun laws ain't going to change it. That's not the problem. The problem is the spirits between these things. And I know the trolls are going to come on here and I know the trolls are going to try to comment all they want to do. I don't, I don't care. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a very stubborn person when it comes to caring about certain things. If I'm doing my assignment, guess what? Nothing you can do can deter me from doing my assignment. So I ask you right now, pray right now at your desk at this hour. Pray right now. In the name of Jesus, that these things can, these, pl these plots of these enemies can be foiled before they come out anymore. But guess what? The good thing about all of this, if you're a student of the word, you know what happens at the end. You know that we, in the end, we win. We win in the end. I, I, I think... Uh, Pastor Brian Key Williams for uh, giving a, 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 an explanation on some things about the, uh, today in his scope that he talked about uh, the name of Sterling. We know Sterling means precious and valuable. And I believe in all hearts, all people are precious to God in his sight. Whether you believe or you don't believe. We're all his children. We're all we're all created by him. But it's amazing how you can see Things in the spirit that many people don't even see. We go to the store, we look at sterling silver, something that's precious. And this man's last name was Sterling. He was precious to God, no doubt, just like you are. I pray God's protection over each and every one of you today. Because you're going to see things that's going to keep coming about. This month is a month of completion. We know this is the seventh month. I wasn't going to get on Periscope today. I plan to do it tomorrow. But he really put it in my spirit to come on today. But the Lord is doing some things right now that we believe him for his blessings. We believe him for all the things that he's promised us in our lives and stuff like that. But guess what? We don't never want to look at the bad things. We don't ever look at the bad things as a barometer to see the time that we're in. I look at I look at what happened just yesterday. And I know this is off topic, but we looked at a presidential candidate candidate that got off scot free. Scot free for something that somebody else did months and years ago and got put on probation and sentenced to fine. One of our greatest generals in this country. For something that was less than what she did. At what point does lawlessness end? It only ends in the coming of Jesus Christ. So yes, it only ends in that time when Jesus Christ comes back. So what we're going to see, it's going to be much more. It's going to get worse. I hate to tell you people, it's going to get worse. But the only thing we can do is continue to pray to Jesus Christ, seek his face, fast, pray, and commune with him on a daily basis. 
Deny your flesh from these things that, that you seek for your own gratification. Because they serve you no purpose. They serve you no purpose. My God. I can't, I can't even really turn on the news today. I'm a news junkie. I can't even turn on the news today. Because my heart is just that heavy. Because all I know is what the Lord is going to show me later is that these are just more lies from the pits of hell. Look how many people are being deceived right now. Then I'm going to speak on something right here. And I know this is not popular. I don't care what you think about it. But I implore, I implore that the Holy Spirit reveal this to you as he did it to me. Everybody's talking about this Black Lives Matter movement. And as you can see, yeah, I'm black. I grew up in southern Alabama and in Texas. So I know about Jim Crow. I didn't live in that era. My mom did. But guess what? I grew up under I grew up under a generation that knew all about it and showed me some things about what it was to be in the era of Jim Crow. Bless their souls, they've all gone on to, to glory of the Lord. But this Black Lives Matter movement, don't be distracted by that. Don't be distracted because guess what? It's not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. And I'm going to say it again. It's not what you think it is. It's a tool from the enemy to distract you into thinking you're getting freedom, to thinking you're getting justice, to thinking you're getting what's, what's right and what's coming. No, it's not. It's directly from the pit of hell. And the Lord revealed it a few weeks ago. And many of you probably didn't even notice it. A few weeks ago, the leader of the Black Lives Matter movement Twitter account was hacked. It came out two weeks after it was hacked. Hidden there, he was talking to the Attorney General Lynch. Actually, he was talking to Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. So get, hey, watch out. Facebook's another one. He was talking to Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. In that conversation he was having that was hacked, they talked about what they plan to do at the Republican National Convention that's coming up at the end of this month. How they were busting in 6,000 to 8,000 people to cause disruption and discourse so that martial law will be enacted. Guess what, people? They've been trying to do that for months. They've been trying to do it for months. Michael Brown, they tried it then with the riots there. They've tried it many times before. The only time they've been doing it is just been, been practicing it. But it's coming, people. Mark my words. Watch what's going to happen. Don't be distracted by these things that you see. It's just a rehearsal. It's simply just a rehearsal. I immediately went into prayer when I when, when the Lord revealed that to me and allowed me to see those messages that, that they sent. Because you can go on YouTube because a lot of people did YouTube videos about it. And show the actual messages. They don't want Donald Trump to be president. We know that. Why? Because he's not part of the establishment. Yeah, he may say some things that may not seem right. Well, well put it put like this. They, they just ain't right. They downright crazy. But you know what? In the end, he has some truth to it. And I don't support neither one of them. I don't support Trump. I, don't, I definitely don't support Hillary Clinton. Because nothing that a president can do can save the condition of this world. Nothing. Nothing. It hasn't helped in the past eight years. It's gotten worse. Why? Because we look into a man, we look into an office to solve our problems instead of looking to the one who solves all problems. Only God, only Jesus Christ can solve the world. He can save the world. Not a president. Not a politician. I kind of don't. I kind of dislike politicians because to me they all lie. They sell you. They sell you promises, empty promises that they never fulfill. They've been doing it since the beginning of time. You see, in the Babylonian spirit, rise up. It's just getting worse. 
My God. These times that we're in right now are so troublesome right now. The next six months, for some of you who have not gotten to a place right now to really believe Jesus for what he says, it's going to be hard for you. It's going to be hard for us who believe in walking our calling. Because he's going to push us into places that we didn't want to be in. I know I fought against it for many years. Those that know me, I, I, I accept the mark. I, I was called back in 2003. But I denied that calling because I didn't want to do the assignment. But I knew three years ago that I was put here for such a time as this. And I hate to see my people, I hate to see my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ walk around playing all the time. This is serious. We need to be winning souls for Jesus Christ. But we too confused right now. We too, we too focused on an election that's not going to solve anything. The election is not going to happen. I'm just going to be honest. You may go vote, but they won't take office. Whoever it is, they're not going to take office. The Lord showed me that months ago. Some of you on here and some of the prophets that are watching this right now can confirm this word. It's not going to have it. We always want to run to the polls, but money you don't even know, you don't even vote for the president. Why? Because you don't have enough money in your pocket to vote for the president. I'm just being real about it. See, they don't teach that stuff in school no more. They kind of keep us dumb to the point that we don't believe that we have a right to vote. Yeah, you can go cast your ballot. But the only votes that you affect are your local elections. But guess what? We won't vote in the local elections. Because we think we can affect change from the top. And guess what? We can't affect change from the top. You can only affect change from the bottom. There's a thing called the Electoral College, which are some of your wealthiest people in this country. Those are the ones who vote for your president. Those are the ones who put the president in office, not the people. The people have never done that since the Electoral College existed. But they conditioned you to believe that. So you sit there and you look at people talking about, oh, yeah, uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, yeah, Hillary Clinton and stuff like that. Can you tell me something here real quick? I'm going to just drop this. In. Can you tell me how can someone be a presumptive nominee and they didn't have the majority of the popular vote? Because they paid for their vote. They paid for their votes. That's right. I'll tell you one thing. Donald Trump was right the other day when he said the elections was rigged. They are rigged. They are rigged, but we as Christians can't be fooled by this stuff anymore. It's time to wake up. It's time to, it's time to really see things for what it is. Playtime is over. I know this is not a popular word. I know it's not popular. I know people going to probably think I'm crazy and just babbling on or whatever like that, but guess what? After today, playtime is over. That's right, Patrice, the top 1%. But oh, how quickly we forget. We were fighting against that 1% a few years ago. When the stock market went down in 2008, we fought against that 1%. But we so quickly forget because we slide right back into our comfort zone. We go to church on Sunday morning, we sit in our pews, we raise our hand, we say glory, glory, hallelujah. We go home and bake our chicken and sit down and watch TV. Just to do it all over again. But we don't seek to put God in our own heart. We don't seek for his own understanding. We play too much. We play far too much. It's time to wake up, people. And I don't know 
for the people who want to watch this on replay, God bless you. If you share this, God bless you. I'm not playing church either. But I'll tell you this, I used to play church. Yeah, I used to play church. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. Yeah, I used to play church. Those that know me, they know. When they look at me, they see a different me now. I'm a completely different person. When I stopped playing church and started seeing things for what they really were. And it's tough. It's hard. It's difficult. But you know what? I believe God way too much to believe otherwise. I believe him way too much to believe other. So I'm not going to keep you too long. So I know some of you guys are still at work. I got work to do myself. But this was something that God just put on my heart this morning that I need to come and talk to you people about it. I thank you for your, your time. I thank you for sharing and inviting people to the scope. Yes, this was deep. This was deep. But we have to stop playing, people. We got to stop playing. We got to start looking between the lines. Let the Holy Spirit give you the spirit of discernment over these matters. Because if you, if you keep walking around, you're going to end up falling in a hole. The Lord showed me something the other day. I was I was at the store and he was talking to me and he said, if, so, if I was to come back right now, half the people would miss it. And I was like, I was like, what, Lord? What? Huh? What? Half the people. Would, he said, half the people would miss it. And he told me something. He said, look up. And what do you see? I walked around. Matter of fact, I'll tell you where I was. I was in the I was in the Home Depot. And he said, look up, and what do you look around? You know what I saw? Everybody in their cell phones. Everybody in their phones. Not paying attention to what was going on, running into people, left and right. Can you imagine if Jesus Christ was to come right back now and crack that sky, and everybody was in their phones looking at each other? you imagine what kind of chaos and pandemonium would occur? But I remember in his word, he said, look up because your redemption draws nigh. That opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. That opened my eyes to a lot of things and just seeing that alone. Because I realized we're too consumed with our own lives that we can't see the God in things. We can't see him acting in on our behalf. We can't see him moving things in our faith. Come in. But the Lord is trying to get our attention. Oh no, they weren't reading their words on their phone. And you know what? I'm gonna talk about that too, real quick. And I know I know I'm, I know I'm going a little over here. I'm gonna talk about that too, real quick. If you don't have one of these right here, this is the Word of God, the Holy Bible. If you don't have one of these in your possession, you need to get one. And you need to get one real quick. Because this device that you're watching this on right now, these things are going to go away. They're not going to stay. They're going to be worthless. But too many people depend upon them for everything. And they can't pick up the word. The one thing that gets on my nerves right now is when I go to church and the Lord says, open up your Bible. Open up your Bible. And they pull out their phone. I'm sorry. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. I know people will say, well, it's the word. Yeah, it's the word. All right. But nothing can replace this. Nothing can replace the word of God. Yeah, I have multiple devices. I have Bible app on my phone. I have a Bible app and uh, uh, concordance and stuff and everything on my laptop. My Hebrew and Greek translations on my laptop. But nothing, 
Nothing replaces the word of God. Get yourself the word of God. Keep it handy with you at all times. Bibles come small, remember? Remember those little Gideon Bibles we used to get when we were kids? Those little green, red, blue Gideon Bibles? Old Testament, New Testament Bibles and stuff like that? Keep one of those with you. Because I tell you, when, it, when, it, when trouble hits, you're going to be looking for one. And there ain't going to be nowhere to be found. Because the enemy's going to try to make this the enemy. The enemy right now is making the Bible the source of all problems in this world. Right now, and I'm going to say this. You can believe it for what it is because it's the truth. They've already written a document in the National Terrorism Center that says evangelicals and Christians are the, are the highest threat to the United States. That's truth. This country was founded on the belief in God. We have a strong foundation in the belief of God, but guess what? The enemy is eroding that foundation by making us the enemy. By saying what we believe in this word is evil. That's right, sister. Believers are considered to be terrorists. Do you feel that you're a terrorist? I know I don't. I only want people to be saved. I only want people to make it to heaven. Yes, it's because of the Muslim agenda. That has part to do. Yeah, we're not the ones doing it. We speak life into people. We speak deliverance into people's lives. We speak the best of people. But guess what? The enemy don't want that. He don't want that. He, we show up, the devil flees. But I'm going to save that for another scope. That's another lesson for the day. Thank you guys for your time. I thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for listening. Is it frozen? I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and end it up though. Right I thank you all. I love you all. Thank you for your time. Again, share with your networks if you hadn't shared. Catch the replay on Facebook or your network accounts. Give me a, if you like what I said, if you agree, whatever, give me some hearts. I appreciate you. I love you all. But let's continue to be in prayer. My name is Kevin Malone. Also known as Kevin DK Malone, my radio name. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. And it's all your own Periscope as well. And so you also find me on my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is DK the Watchman on YouTube. You can find me there where I do uh, release some words from the Lord. Clearly waiting to see what he's going to say completely before I put it up and stuff. So I thank you all for your time. I love you all. And thank you again for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Be blessed.